metabolism of the carbon skeletons of amino acids. The amino acid catabolism could mainly be from pro a protein diet being broken down into your amino acids. Some would be, as we have learned in the previous lecture, would be excreted in the form of ammonia and the non-toxic urea. Some would be synthesized to body proteins and some would have your carbon skeletons which would be converted to glycogen or fats and would be a source of energy needs. It is the removal of alpha amino nitrogen by transamination as the first catabolic reaction except for the following amino acids. Proline, hydroxyproline, threonine, and lysine. Amino acids are converted to CAC intermediates or their precursors so that they can be metabolized to carbon dioxide and water or used in gluconeogenesis. It accounts for 10 to 15% of metabolic energy generated by animals. And it could be classified according to the following categories. It could be glucogenic, which means carbon skeletons are degraded to pyruvate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, fumarate or oxaloacetate, and are therefore Yes, glucose precursors. It could be ketogenic amino acids, carbon skeletons that are broken down to acetyl-CoA or acetoacetate and can thus be converted to your fatty acids or your ketone bodies. So it would connect you to your citric acid cycle, your glucose gluconeogenesis cycle, and these are the states of your different amino acids. <clears throat> so, it could either be glucogenic, ketogenic, and glucogenic and ketogenic. So, the only purely ketogenic amino acid would be your leucine. So, your amino acids that are converted to pyruvate are the following alanine, cysteine, glycine, serine, threonine, and tryptophan. While your amino acids that are converted to oxaloacetate is your aspartate and your asparagine. To alpha ketoglutarate, it's arginine, glutamate, glutamine, histidine, and proline. Converted to fumarate would be aspartate tyrosine, and phenylalanine. The succinyl-CoA, isoleucine, methionine, and valine. To acetyl-CoA and or acetoacetate, isoleucine, leucine, threonine, lysine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, and tyrosine. So this is the summary of all those previous slides amino acids degraded to common metabolic intermediates and entering the various parts of your citric citrate cycle. Your amino acids which are then converted to pyruvate is alanine, so transamination forms pyruvate which can then be decarboxylated to acetyl CoA. Second one is glycine. It splits carbon dioxide and ammonia and N5 and 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. And the transamination of glycine to glyoxylate with glutamine or alanine. Serine. It can also be metabolized to pyruvate degraded to glycine and your N5 and 10 methylene 
tetrahydrofolate. So your cysteine and your cysteine, cysteine is converted to cysteine, and cysteine is then catabolized via two pathways, either your direct oxidative pathway or your transamination pathway. So this is your cysteine being converted to your cysteine by cysteine reductase. Or your cysteine being used in the direct oxidative pathway and your transamination pathway. Trianine is metabolized by the cleavage of acetaldehyde and lysine. It is then oxidized to acetate, which is then converted to acetyl-CoA. So this is your trionine reaction being metabolized eventually to acetyl-CoA through these three reactions. <coughs> so your trionine could be converted either to acetaldehyde acetyl-CoA, then glycine to serine, and cysteine, alanine, and serine would eventually be metabolized as pyruvate. Oxaloacetate for your carbon skeletons would be transaminated form of aspartate. Asparagine, it undergoes hydrolysis so this is your aspartate and asparagine. So it's either metabolized by asparaginase, then transaminated to form oxaloacetate. Then amino acids converted to alpha-glutarate would be your glutamate, which would be transamination forms alpha-ketoglutarate. And glutamine undergoes hydrolysis to form glutamate. So this is your glutamate and glutamine. So your glutamine would be metabolized to your L-glutamate, then eventually transaminated to form alpha-ketoglutarate. So your proline is oxidized to dehydroproline, which adds former water-forming glutamate semialdehyde. This is then oxidized to glutamate and then would be transaminated to alpha-ketoglutarate. Arginine is converted to ornithine, which then undergo transamination to glutamate semialdehyde and then would eventually lead to your Alpha-ketoglutarate. Histidine is a non-oxidatively deaminated, then hydrated, and its imidazole ring cleaved to form your N for miminoglutamate. For group is then transferred to TH4 to form your N for miminoth4 and glutamate. The excretion of fig glue following a dose of histidine can be used to detect folic acid deficiency. So for the previous slides, your arginine, your proline, and your histidine would all form, and glutamine would all form glutamate and have intermediates such as ornithine, glutamate semialdehyde, and fig glue, which would eventually be metabolized to alpha. Glutarate. Converted to fumarate, it would be phenylaniline. The first reaction in its degradation is its hydrolytic reduction to tyrosine. Then tyrosine is transaminated to P-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate, followed by concerted ring hydroxylation and side chain migration to form homogentisate with abscorbate as reductant. Aromatic ring opens and is hydrolyzed to fumarate and acetoacetate, as shown in this diagram. 
This is the fate of aspartate forming from your urea cycle and eventually forming fumarate. So this is the fate that would end up in fumarate, phenylalanine, tyrosine, aspartate with the intermediates arginine succinate and homogenesate. And your amino acids converted to succinyl CoA. This is your methionine. It condenses with ATP to form S adenosyl methionine. Removal of methyl group forms your S adenosyl homocysteine, which is hydrolyzed to adenosine and homocysteine. Homocysteine then combines to serine to yield cristathione, which subsequently forms cysteine and alpha ketobutyrate. Alpha ketobutyrate is degraded to propionyl CoA and then to succinyl CoA. This is the metabolization of your methionine. And then isoleucine and valine. Isoleucine is converted to propionyl CoA, which would lead back to your succinyl CoA. And valine is converted to methylmalonyl CoA. These mechanisms to be discussed with other branch chain amino acids. So your methionine, as I isoleucine and valine, would form the carbon skeletons alpha ketobutyrate, prop ionyl CoA, methylmalonyl CoA, which, which which will eventually be metabolized to succinyl CoA and degraded to acetyl-CoA and or acetoacetate. Your lysine has several pathways for degradation, but the pathway that proceeds via formation of saccharopin predominates in mammalian liver. Pathway involves transamination, oxidative decarboxylation, and reactions similar to fatty acid coa -oxidation. So this is the fate and its journey towards being acetoacetate. Tryptophan, carbon atoms of the side chain and aromatic ring completely degraded via clinorenin antranilate pathway. Initial reaction involves cleavage of your indole ring with incorporation of two atoms of molecular oxygen by tryptophan oxygen. So this is the metabolization of tryptophan, eventually forming acetoacetate. The tryptophan oxygenase is an iron porphyrin metalloprotein, which is inducible in the liver by adrenal corticosteroids and by tryptophan. Feedback inhibited by nicotinic acid and derivatives including NADPH. Leucine. Purely ketogenic amino acid is degraded to HMG-CoA, which is converted to acetoacetate and acetyl-CoA. This is to be discussed together with the other branch chain amino acids. Branch chain amino acids catabolism. So there are there is valin, isoleucin, and leucine. So it shares the same first two reactions that employs common enzymes. These results in products are then catabolized by distinct pathways. So the first three reactions shared by these branch chain amino acids would be transamination to corresponding alpha keto acids, oxidative decarboxylation to corresponding acyl CoA and dehydrogenation by FAD to form a double bond. So these are the first three reactions of your branch chain amino acids, namely leucine, valine, and isoleucine. Again, this would be the fates of your amino acids eventually forming substrates for your citric acid cycle. Of course, any deficiencies in these amino acids would result in amino acidopathies. It's 
almost always associated with amino acid catabolism rather than biosynthesis. So sufficient amounts of all amino acids, whether essential or non-essential, are present in a well-balanced diet. The failure to catabolize amino acids will result in accumulation of the amino acid and its metabolites to the point that they become toxic. So one example will be alcaptonuria. So this is a defect in the catabolism of tyrosine. It's the deficiency of the enzyme homogentisate oxidase. The most striking manifestation is the darkening of urine. It stands in air due to the presence of homogentisate. It later develops atritis and connective tissue pigmentation. Another is phenylketonuria. It results from the inability to convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. The defect may be in the enzymes phenylalanine hydroxylase, protetrahydrobiopterin synthase, or dihydrobiopterin reductase. Major consequence of it is mental retardation, and treatment is a diet low in phenylalanine. So this is the metabolization of your phenylalanine to your L-tyrosine and your tetrahydrobiopterin. So, alternative pathways of phenylalanine catabolism in phenyl ketonurics would be available. And heart nut disease, there's a defect in the intestinal and renal transport of mutual amino acids, including tryptophan. They manifest with pelagro like signs and symptoms because of limited conversion of tryptophan to niacin. And MSUD, or maple syrup urine disease. The effect is absence of branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex. Odor of urine resembles maple syrup or burnt sugar, and brain damage develops unless promptly treated with a diet low in branch chain amino acids. Thank you for listening to this biochemistry lecture. Please do subscribe to my channel for more lessons in biochemistry.